guys welcome back to my channel today I have a process paint with me kind of video uh, I am a <laughs> I'm a big Game of Thrones fan um, I am team dragon uh, it doesn't mean I'm team Daenerys or team Jon or team Night King I'm just team dragon I'm here for dragons the other thing I wanted to mention before we jump in is that I am using some new brushes that I've been testing out for kind of a while and I'm so excited about them. I'm really excited to see what you guys think of them. Hope you find them useful. I think they're uh, definitely a different offering from some of the brushes that I have made in the past and I think that they will fill a need. So excited for you guys to try them out. You can download them at my Dropbox link in the description below and I use a lot of those today along with my watercolor paper texture which is also available. So thank you so much for watching, hope you enjoy. All right, so what I have here is just a quick pencil sketch that I did off of this photo. I used one of Procreate's native pencil brushes from their sketching panel, just their 6B pencil. Then I sketched this in just on a different document and then pasted it into my watercolor paper texture. So I have this pasted in here at the bottom below all of my painting layers. And I'm going to tap the end here and set the opacity to about 50 and then move on to one of my painting layers here. And then I have this palette here that I'm gonna work off of. I am going to select the darkest color in this range of red oranges. And I might pull in some more reds and blacks and grays just because that's more of Drogon's color scheme. But to start, I'm gonna use this deep Cabernet color. And then for a brush, I'm gonna use this petal painter brush that I developed for florals, but I really like the way that it behaves. It has a lot of variation in the taper depending on pressure, so it's extremely pressure sensitive. I used one of the native grain sources from Procreate's Pro Library, and something about the scale of it, I just really love the realistic watercolor effect. And it has a slight hard edge on one side, that you can really use to your advantage to make the most realistic watercolor. So I am working in my watercolor paper texture, which is available for download, and I am just going to get started. So I'm using the petal painter brush, this burgundy, and work on a pretty small brush size. And what I'm gonna start doing is just going over, I'm gonna start by going over what I sketched for the most part, um, using this darker color on the outside edge will help give the overall painting more of a true watercolor effect because when you're painting watercolor in real life, the, the pigment tends to pool at the edge of what you've painted and then it gets lighter towards the middle unless you go in and so that's like the natural way that watercolor looks. That is what we're trying to achieve here. As always, a few hand gestures that you'll see me do that I find to be indispensable in Procreate are the two finger tap for undo and then three finger tap for redo. I use those extremely frequently. I also use the um, pinch in and out to zoom in and out and two fingers to move my canvas around depending on where I'm working at. So you can see this brush, I don't think I've actually used it in any of my videos before, but it has a lot of really cool dynamic qualities. I'll just go on the edge here and this is with a lot of pressure, but it really quickly tapers out to a small point here. Um, I just find it really malleable to whatever I'm painting. I can just manipulate it to do whatever I want. So it's quickly become one of my favorite brushes to use. I'm also going in and adding some pigment where there will be shadow. I'll go and refine this later, but it's a good starting point. All right, now I'm going to go in with this dark gray, still using the petal painter brush. I'm gonna bring the size down and I'm gonna work on just detailing out. Actually, I'm going to jump into the layer above and work on detailing out the eye here. I'm also going to reduce the opacity so that I can see the detail of what I'm painting a lot better. I'm 
And I'm gonna go in with my blender. I'm gonna use the watery ink brush. So I'm gonna re-click on my reference layer and then click on a third layer to work in. And now I'm going to be working in this black color here. All right, so now I'm going to separate out the tongue and the eye using the freehand select tool. I'm just gonna select the eye and then three fingers swipe down, hit cut and paste, and it'll automatically bring that selection into this new layer here. I'm gonna change the blend mode back to multiply. And then I'm going to bring burgundy layer here that I did up to be on top of these. Then I'm going to use two fingers to pinch to merge them together. All right, so now that I've got essentially the base drawn here, I'm gonna go in with some more colors, add some color variation, some detailing, and then I'm gonna start blending it together. Different than before, I'm going to do all this using the watery ink brush, and I'm gonna make sure that I'm on this burgundy layer. All right, so it's looking a little crazy now. My next step is going to be to start blending it all together. So for this, I'm going to use my watery ink brush again. So I'm gonna pull out my reference picture. Just to check some of these details. Looking at this, it looks like I'm gonna need to add a lot more red into the wings. He's got these like glowing details. So I'm gonna add some red to some of his body here and maybe some vein thingies.
Now I'm going to merge all of my layers together. So he's now all in one layer. And I'm gonna create a mask so that I can do some detail on the edges without going over. So now I'm just gonna duplicate the layer, hit normal on one, the bottom one, change it to alpha lock, select a white fill color, and then hit fill layer. Now I'm going to duplicate that four times. Merge it together by pinching. Duplicate it once more. I've got a pretty opaque outline here. I'm going to hit select and then I'm going to go back onto my painting layer and choose a dark color here. And I'm going to add some detail here with the watercolor edge brush. Final step is going to be adding in a background here. So I'm going to leave both of these. I'm going to deselect and then I'm going to drag a clean layer underneath here. Make a copy here. And then I'm going to choose this deep blue green color, staying on the watercolor edge brush. Again, thank you so much, especially if you made it all the way through this video. If you enjoyed this, give it a thumbs up. That helps me out and subscribe if you want more. Um, I'll be back with more tutorials and hopefully some more interesting brushes for you to try.